So I just got done talking about the iPhone 14 Pro, and I genuinely do think this is probably one of those iPhones that could end up lasting way longer than majority of people probably think, and there are actually two iPhones that I could probably last or kind of throw into here that may end up lasting way longer than you would probably ever imagine. And those iPhones are actually the iPhone 13 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro. Now the 14 Pro is the latest one, the 13 Pro is, you know, the last generation one, but these two iPhones have a very interesting type of experience and type of relationship right now because the iPhone 13 Pro has pretty much the same exact chipset as the iPhone 14. The 13 also is a little bit different than the iPhone 14. If you kind of heard what Apple said, they took the same one that's in the 13 Pro, not necessarily the 13. The 13 has a different type of chipset. It's like one less core GPU or something like that. The 13 Pro and the 14 match up identically, including the same amount of RAM. The 14 Pro with the A16 chip inside of that is probably going to be the same chipset that's inside the base iPhone 15. Now, why is this important? Well, if you think about how Apple kind of landscapes out their software, experience with their software, most of the time, if they end up dropping an iPhone, there are chances where they would group two iPhones together. For the last few generations, it's been like the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 6, they got dis discontinued together. The iPhone 6S and the 7, they got discontinued together. So I think what Apple's going to be doing now is that they are going to be dropping that standard iPhone 13 or the iPhone you know, 14 models, but they are going to keep supporting the Pro models. They'll support the 13 Pro for how long the iPhone 14 lasts, and they're going to support the iPhone 14 Pro for how long the iPhone 15, the base model, lasts. So this is good and it's bad. So it's good because it'll help support the Pro models a little bit longer, but also I think it's bad because I may end up discontinuing the older iPhones a little bit sooner. Apple's going to have to do something here because if they're kind of keeping the same chipset on the older iPhone, they're going to have to distinguish those models somehow. There's really no point that I'm buying a you know Pro model of this year if it's not going to last as long as the A16 that's in the next iPhone. You know what I mean? So in my opinion, that makes the most amount of sense here. And if this is how Apple's long-term strategy is going to go, they already have it pretty much put into stone that the iPhone of the Pro model this year is going to last as long as the base model of next year. Because they share the same type of chipset and they, because they share so many other things like that, that is probably what's going to end up happening. And from my experience, Apple's done this so many times. If you look at you know the iPhone 5S and the 6, the 6S and the 7, really the only thing they're really, really confused about, in my opinion, is the iPads. They just keep supporting those things for a long period of time. But I'd be curious to see what happens in the future. But if you buy a 13 Pro or if you buy a 14 Pro, I kind of do think that these iPhones will last way longer than a majority of people will think so. In terms of that, that kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.